everybody and welcome back. You know who I am and I think you all know who this is. This is Lovey. I'm Caroline Best of the Dow Horsemanship. This is Everything Horses and More Video Library. So today we're going to be diving in deep about how to create relaxation in our horses, specifically the somatic experience. And Lovey is a great candidate for this work. Just to give you guys a little story and history about Lovey, Lovey is 10. <clears throat> She'll be 11 in January. And I got her when she just turned, shortly after she turned three, she had spent a year on the track being trained to be a racehorse. She only had one start, so she never really raced, but she didn't make it because she wasn't fast enough. And in that year, um, that she was being trained to be a racehorse. I got her from Tampa Bay Downs. They had done so much damage to this horse mentally, not physically. I was blessed mentally. And it was her owner that actually heard about me through one of the vets at Tampa Bay Downs that sent me, got my phone number and sent me a picture with her and pleaded for me that he would even ship her to me, pleaded um, that I take her because she was going to be put down. That's how bad off she was. Look at her now. You'd think I drugged her. This is called the endorphin or dopamine release. So when I got Lovey, not only was she a whirlwind, an emotional whirlwind, she was at least 100 pounds underweight, so you could see her ribs. And we have before and after pictures of her in some of our courses. Um, she also had ringworm. She had an acute uh, bout of fungus, fungal, um, where the saddle was, which meant every time they trained her, breezed her daily, what they do is they, they every day, these horses are locked up 23 hours a day, and then for an hour, they take them out and breeze them. And so they didn't care about her. And so she had this horrible fungal infection, ringworm. She had to be isolated for over a month and on a ton of medications, not to mention she had ulcers. That was obvious and, and tons of diarrhea. And she was a nervous mess and you couldn't touch her around her face. You, when you went to groom her, um, it was as if she'd been pricked by needles or her mane, which was a lot shorter, had been pulled. And so you couldn't groom her mane or she'd just have this horrible reaction. Um, and as she became more confident over the years, she still wasn't very, she still wasn't very comfortable with that and would pin her ears. Um, she wasn't really afraid of whips, but she had been pushed so hard to get excited, to get that adrenaline release for so long that it had created a, in her nervous system, a condition. And we understand the psychology that it created trauma, but now we have to look at the physiology or the biology, how it affected her internally, her physically, her mentally. And it, they had destroyed her nervous system. And she's not the only horse I've worked with like this. Um, all three of the race horses that I rescued have been some of the toughest restarts for me. I do know people that have rescued, adopted, or bought thoroughbreds off the track and have had phenomenal success with them. They were not a difficult restart. But the three that I got, I was their last chance, or they were going to be put down. And who knows what, what goes on. Sent to auction, put down, kill pen, you name it. So real quick, I'm bringing all this up because this is a typical pattern. Um, it's good information for all of you when I say it's a typical pattern of how to help a horse. I gave her off, um, meaning I just wanted her to be a horse and be exposed to the healthy environment of all of my horses and the way that we worked and, and, and how we were on a daily basis. So she was able to become a horse for the first time since she was a baby for about nine months. And then um, I was not on the feed program that I am on today 
but I was giving her a ton of alfalfa hay, which is excellent for the gut, high in fiber, high in protein, and a ton of um, soaked, I think I was doing some soaked pellets in addition to grain, but I did not remove the grain, and that was one of the things that I should have done. But besides all of that, it's really not about what was going on nutritionally for her to help her pick up the weight. She still was skinny in nine months. It was emotionally how I was gonna be able to turn her around. And it wasn't until I brought her into my program, my mastery membership, and started developing her slowly, developing her emotions, and resetting, re-regulating her nervous system that she started to add weight. So of course this process takes a lot longer than pouring food into your horse or supplements or ulcer guard, but it did work. And Lovey is still very sensitive horse by nature, so she's still very prone to, um, we take things really slow for her. She's also, as I've mentioned before in a lot of other videos with her, that she has one of the best work ethics. And that's definitely bred into her definitely in the thoroughbred industry. And what that means, you know, is that she's a pleaser. She shows up for the work. She loves to be included. But for her especially, she is um, like a type A personality in a human. You know, she doesn't know when to stop. She just goes and goes and goes. So you want to do the opposite with a horse like that when you know that they are easy to work with and they want to do the work with you. Um, you want to go slow because she can, she can really build herself into a tizzy and get ulcers all over again by trying to please and overdo and trying to learn and accomplish too much. <clears throat> so it's just really understanding horses, the psychology of it and your horse's true nature. But you're not going to know until you start working with them how they show up in the work. And that's what the Mastery Membership is all about.